Good morning, folks. I'm going to be showing you the flare from three days ago. We had an unusually beautiful imaging, not only because it was huge, but we got a perfect side view as the active region turned the limb, but also because it's raining fire. One of the sun's mysteries, do you see any plasma going up along the loops, or does it look like it's just appearing at the top of the arc to fall down? A number of us have looked at this in every wavelength, folks. Whether the loops are gathering ambient solar wind or the sun is taking localized particle bombardment from somewhere, whatever it is, the plasma's just going one way. Moving on, June was the fourth hottest month on record. You might remember that July 2011 to June 2012 was the hottest year on record, and then July 2012 we broke 2,000 heat records in the first two weeks. The French refused to budge on fracking, probably the country leading the moral ground on that isolated topic. Quakewatch continues as high activity is sufficing for larger quakes at this time, thankfully. After rocking offshore in the four magnitude range, a five pointer hit off the California coastline. Moderate tremors are shaking the southwest Pacific, got volcanoes on watch there as well. I've used this image in the past to show ionospheric layers, you just have to imagine the F layer split into two. Anyway, the critical frequency of each layer is the highest frequency wave that can be skipped off of that layer. It also tells us how charged up and ionized it is. You remember a few days ago I showed you noctilucent clouds? They are a rare arctic electrical phenomenon high in the D layer that we're seeing at low latitudes nearly every day. That's one layer that's juiced up and here's the other. Fairly high reading on the F1 layer critical frequency last night. That's expected about a week after the big space weather we had. Since 2007, a slow cumulative over-ionization has taken place in this layer as we start back in 1999, moving forward through last solar maximum with a modest rise, going back down at solar minimum, and completely losing form in the last five years. You can see that dot on the right is from last night. That's two layers of our ionosphere that are juiced up, folks. The central dark region is a corona hole that may hit us with a strong solar wind stream in two to three days. Flanking that corona hole are a couple of active regions that appear somewhat in decay but complex nonetheless and with the earth footprint on them, let's keep watch for flares. Coming over the limb, you see darkness near the solar equator. That's our giant corona hole coming back, uh, having a look from the side so we can watch her swing in to face us on stereo B. Things are getting very interesting, folks. She looks big this time. Quake Watch is slightly lower today, but will build back up approaching the Mercury-Sun conjunction. That's the news, folks. Be safe.